I think the real impact and where this all sort of normalizes is Q2. And that's sort of what I've been trying to think more and more, because when I think about what the stock's doing, how we're down big today, I think a lot of what's the market's factoring in is like, okay, we wrote off Q1 is going to be a bad last two and three weeks. But now the question is, it looks like Q2 is really going to be super weak. Because even at my estimate, that's super low in Gene Munsters. We're talking about basically flat year over year for Tesla, despite the, the this whole um, you know illness impact. And so, but Q2 is really going to be where the year over year comparisons start to fall apart for Tesla. So I'm curious, I can put on my on the screen really briefly. Um, this is what I was expecting for Q2, which is 60,000 deliveries total, um, about 2000 Model Y, 50,000 Model 3. And basically what I have, is, and what I'm assuming is that like everything falls off of a cliff, um, except for uh, China starts to pick up the slack for decrease in Europe and, and the US. And then I think, you know, things start to normalize in June is basically what I'm expecting. So I'm curious if you have any take on, you know, how this will all unfold in, and spill over into Q2, because I feel like that's what the market's really going to be looking for now. Yeah, I agree. I mean, the number for Q1 is going to matter if it's if it's really low and it shows that Tesla has a demand issue or implies that Tesla has a demand issue. I think that will cause people to be pretty scared. Um, and that's probably the most potential negative coming out of this report. And in terms of positives, I think really you have to look at either guidance or Gigafactory Shanghai sort of production rates because people will use that to then look for, you know, how's the rest of the year going to play out? How is Q2 going to play out? And I think that's obviously the market's forward looking. So that's really what's most important. Bad Q1 numbers aren't going to, you know, people are going to be able to move on from that unless it presents, you know, those concerns about demand because that's one of the two most important things for Tesla in terms of Wall Street's reactions. Specifically, when it comes to Q2, it's, I think, the same situation. We just don't know right now. There's a lot of uncertainty. Personally, I expect Fremont to be shut down probably through April. Alameda County, the county that Fremont is in, just extended the um, the shelter-in-place orders until the end of April from, I think, April 7th. So while Tesla doesn't necessarily have to comply with that because they are a essential business, according to, I believe, the federal government, so they sort of um, they could operate. I still think it places challenges on them when the county is otherwise in a shelter in place order. You know, you have maybe not necessarily a ton of the majority of workers at Tesla may not have families or things like that. A lot of younger workers. But, um, you know, if your kids are home from school, you have to either find someone to take care of them or you need to take care of them yourself. Things like that. Just little things like that, I think, add up and present challenges. And I think Tesla addressed that in the announcement where they said that they're going to shut down the factory, basically saying like, it's really challenging for our customers, for our employees, um, and for our suppliers. So as we see these shelter in place orders get extended, I think it just more and more difficult for Tesla to operate, even if they technically could. So I think it would be surprising to see them reopen Fremont before then. I mean, Tesla's going to be probably as aggressive as any company in doing that. So I think we'll see them be one of the first to reopen. Uh, but I just think it's going to take a while. And then, you know, if you're taking a third of the quarterly production away, that's, you know, 30, 40,000 vehicles, in which case you could be at a production level of around maybe 80,000. And then, you know, if there are demand challenges, certainly being at that 65,000 level is not, not anything crazy. The counterpoint to that would be that if they do build up inventory this quarter and they have maybe 15,000, 20,000 vehicles, um, more produced than delivered, then they have that sort of as a tailwind to some extent, at least from available vehicle inventory going into Q2 that could help ease some of that in Q2 where we might not see as big of a spread.